Intelligence is, is just down the road from Dynamic Controls, uh, literally on the same street. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, which is kind of like out of the Silicon Plains of Christchurch down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a real pleasure to introduce Ray Hedayat, who is actually one of our graduates and also a graduate of Lincoln. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Get that and Burnside. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to claim that while we? Um, and uh, Rick, um, well, I'm going to. I'll hand over to Ray. I'll let you talk okay. about okay. what you've been doing. Yes, Colin. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ray. Um, Hi, Ray. Good to see you all. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been. I've been to University of Canterbury and Lincoln. Um, I actually I did my PhD at Canterbury, and um, I was watching Ian's speech and. Um, you know the part where he showed the picture of the, um, the corridors and the automatic detection? Um, that's actually based on the thing which I did in my PhD, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I've never actually seen it work before, so... <laughs> quite cool. Um, anyway, um, so, my name's Ray, I'm gonna um, tell you a few things about what I do. So, um, I started at Telegis in May 2010, I um, started as a graduate software engineer, and now I'm a team leader. Um, so today I'm going to tell you a bit about Telegis Route, which is the product that I make. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about three algorithms which I do. So Tim told me that um, you guys are probably studying a lot of the theoretical algorithms. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to... Tell you how to how how we apply these in the real world, basically. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So Telegis Route, um, it's route optimization software. So this is for users which have thousands of customers, um, a number of drivers, perhaps about fifty drivers, and they want to find the best assignment of drivers, sorry, of customers to drivers. So this is quite difficult, um, because it's a combinatorial problem. There's um, billions and billions of combinations, um, so we can't search them all. Um, it's complicated also because there are um, all kinds of special requirements. So certain customers might require to be delivered between 10 and 11 a.m., for example. Um, they might require certain attributes, for example, they might require a Spanish-speaking driver, or they might require refrigeration on the truck. Um, and also recurring schedules, so customers might want to be delivered every day, every week, on the last Thursday of the month, three times a month, all kinds of things like that. So it gets quite complicated. Um, so to solve for all of these constraints, um, what we do is we use a genetic algorithm. So um, I'll give you a quick description of how that works. So a genetic algorithm tries out thousands of different scenarios every second. Um, and it does that by evaluating each scenario. So what evaluating means is um, if we have a particular scenario, we um, calculate the real costs of it, so petrol and wages. Um, and we also calculate um, a value of all the penalties or violations which it's made. So for example, if you have a scenario and a customer is delivered 10 minutes late, we apply $2 per minute late, so we add $20 to the cost of that. And that's how we decide what is the best solution that we found. Um, so we also, to make this really fast, we distribute this across multiple, multiple machines. And um, about uh, the team that I work in, so when I started, I was the second developer in Telegis Route. Um, and now we've got 15 people in there. Um, but Telegis as a whole, um, the development office in Christchurch, it was 16 when I started, and it now has 110 people. Um, but it's also got offices all around the world. It was um, founded in Christchurch, though. So, I'm going to tell you about uh, the first interesting algorithm. Okay. So, these are some routes. Um, the customer doesn't like them so much. So, why not? Um, it's because if we draw um, polygons around each of these routes, um, what we have is uh, some of the routes are overlapping, as you can see. Um, so you can see the red and the purple routes 
um, that their space is encroaching on each other. And customers don't like this. They like drivers to work in a, a small geographical area, which they can get to know really well, and they can use their knowledge to deliver really efficiently. So when you say customers, is this the, the, the companies that employ you, or the people waiting for packages? Um, yes, uh, the customers, the people who use this product to deliver to people. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So, um... So he had taxi drivers, no wonder that he recurring on two in payment. Yeah, yeah. So it's like no, that. it's direct. It, it, it's, it's not a secret who your main customers are, is it? Oh, sure, okay. Um, Coca-Cola, Ford, the FBI... <laughs> 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 Can you arrange things for us? <laughs> 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 um, yes. All the time. Um, lots of big things. Ford, did I say that already? Volvo. Um, people like that. We have a lot of big customers. Um, so yeah, customers don't like that. So we want to find a way to um, get rid of that. So in a genetic algorithm framework, what we need to do is we need to add a penalty for these overlapping routes. Um, so, we have to think of a smart way to do it. We need this to be fast, we want to run this thousands of times per second, and we can sometimes have 500 routes or more. So how do we do this? Well, okay. Um, well the first observation is what we want to do is um, the penalty that we want to apply is proportional to the amount of overlap area. So if we have two routes, and this is the area which overlaps, um, we're going to apply a penalty which is proportional to that size. Um, so how do we do that quickly? Um, so <coughs> I thought about this for a really long time, and um, this is what I've come up with. So um, what we do um, is we use... Uh, have you guys heard of this? So we use... A Voronoi tessellation, um, which is a well-known algorithm. Um, it calculates borders between um, different points, and it guarantees that all the borders are equidistant between all the points. And I've drawn this by hand, so this might not be quite correct, but you get the idea. Um, so we use that to generate a number of cells. And then what we do um, is for every cell which is contained within a route, we add one vote. If any cells have two or more votes, then we know that they're contained in multiple routes. We know that they're overlapping. And so using this approach, we can approximate the overlapping area and um, calculate a corresponding penalty. So um, why is this approach good? Um, this is an order n algorithm, so it's linear time. So um, it, um, the other way to do it would be to compare every route against every other route, which would be n squared. So if we had 500 routes, n squared would be proportional to 250,000. Um, but order n, it's proportional to 500. So you can see that um, it's, it's um, really fast in that way. Um, we have a performance impact of around 5% slowdown. Um, by adding this um, code to the algorithm. Um, and the advantages of using the Voronoi tessellation, um, we can pre-calculate um, the whole tessellation, and we can do um, a lot of the pre-calculation um, beforehand. Um, and the approximation grid um, matches the density of the stops. So in areas where there are more stops, um, the grid's more dense. So that's one example of um, an interesting algorithm which we have developed intelligence. So um, this is the result. As you can see, the polygons do not overlap. And just How show, often do you have to make that sort of calculation? I mean, because if you did it once, does that last for a whole year, or is that for the morning and it might change by the afternoon or what? Yep. Um, so the way that customers use it is they normally plan um, their whole day. So they will say, these are my customers for the day and we'll be doing the calculation for that day. Um, sometimes they plan for the three months, for a year, um, and in that case we do it um, as often as they need it to. 
Sorry. Yes. So is your software running on um, an embedded system inside a vehicle, or is it running on a, a workstation at your client side, or is it running on your own servers that they remote into? Um, it's running on our own servers. Um, we have a um, distribution cluster, so um, we have 26 machines, um, and we'll keep adding more. Um, so that way, they don't need to have 26 machines in their, in their office. Like that. So is that 26 machines to your worldwide calculations? Um, yes, that's right. Yeah. What about in Christchurch, how it's all changed with the roadworks and it's changing all the time? Yep. That must change things quite dramatically. How do you cope with that? What do you do about that? Or do you not worry? Or what do you yep. do? Yep. What do your customers want? Yeah, I understand. Um, so Tyler just creates um, their own uh, mapping solution. So all of the mapping, all of this road network information, all of that stuff, um, we create. So um, yeah, we just update the data. Um, um, we don't have live traffic. We don't have live traffic in this system because um, this is um, strategic planning, so it's like one whole day. Um, when when we push the strategic plan to the um, to the actual, we have a thing called progression um, that will um, adjust the plan throughout the day to match the real time traffic. Like um, oh no, we don't have many customers in New Zealand. The most thing I've just said. Wouldn't you be able to tell me the best way to drive home? <laughs> 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 So this might be difficult, but um, how many minutes does it take to drive between all these customers? So these customers are points. Um, At 4 a.m. in the morning, not that long. <laughs> what did you say? 4 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Not that long. Okay, yeah. Well, it's no traffic congestion. 3 so. p.m. at night. Yeah. It's quite different. Um, can I have some guesses? Oh. What's the scale? Where's the scale? Um, well, we don't do from what? You are. We're in an island. We're an island. Yeah. 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 Yeah
um, we can use a minimum spanning tree. So um, I don't know if you guys know what that is. So um, that's a, a tree which visits all the points, um, visits all the points once, um, and because it's a tree, it doesn't, um, unlike the travelling salesman, it doesn't, it can visit, it can have one gauge going in or out, or it can have two, or it can have three. Um, that doesn't matter. Um, so this algorithm can be solved much faster than the travelling salesman. Um, it gives you an approximate result. It gives you a good idea of how long it might take to visit all those stops, but it um, doesn't take so long to calculate. So can I just ask you, when you think about trees, that one in the top are overhead. You've got three lines coming out of it. Are you saying is it an outline? Is it an outline? It's, it's a tree. It doesn't have a particular direction. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not talking about someone driving up and down. Um, so what's the purpose of the tree? The tree allows us to estimate the amount of time. So um, if, each, if we know that, uh, say for example, this takes um, two minutes, this one up here, yeah. we know that this takes um, three minutes, um, then we can add the time of all the legs of the tree. So you're just adding the length of the tree, basically? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yep. Um, so we can do that quite quickly, and we don't have to solve the whole travelling sales problem. And how do you know your time? So basically, the goal is to not get the exact result, but to get a quick result. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the things we do. So, um, how do we use this? Um, so, this is a feature which we use this in. So, in Telegis Route, we have a system for um, soft territories. So um, each of these flags represents a driver's territory. So um, this yellow flag says the driver should work in this kind of area here. Um, this green flag says the driver should work in this kind of area. Um, so they're not solid territories, it's just um, indicating um, the kind of area where a driver should be. And um, it's good to do it this way um, because um, the customers in the middle, they can go either way depending on um, the amount of work that the drivers have or other constraints. So, um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a system which would automatically generate all of these territory points. Um, so, one of the things is we want all the drivers to have approximately the same amount of work. And so we can't just place them anywhere. So to do this, we need to understand how much driving time it takes um, when, we, when we're moving around the points. So um, basically, we want to answer this question. If we take that stop up there and we add it to this, this driver's workload, what is the effect on the driving time? Um, and from there, we can um, figure out how to balance the um, amount of amount of work for each driver. Um, so to do this, instead of solving the whole travelling salesman problem, um, we use the minimum spanning tree. Um, and the next thing, which we thought of was, um, we're only really adding one stop here. <coughs> do, we, do we need to recalculate the whole thing? So we came up with an algorithm to incrementally just add one stop to the tree, um, so you don't have to recalculate the entire thing. Um, I'm just going to skip over that. There is all kinds of details in there. So essentially, you only calculate the bit that you don't know about. Yep. Because you already right. calculated the rest. Yep. And you're just going to work out the permutations of what's going to be the fastest way to get to that stop. Exactly. And then we yep. bounce up as, as it were, putting that stop in there. Yep, exactly. System. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, so yeah, we incrementally can um, add one stop, figure out how is that going to affect the driving time. And um, yeah, that massively speeds up the, um, the whole algorithm. So what we've done is we've taken that and we've put it into a genetic <coughs> algorithm framework and we use that to automatically place territory points um, in a balanced manner. So all drivers have approximately the same amount of work. So yeah, that is our second algorithm. Okay. Algorithm number three. So, 
as you can imagine, our customers have a lot of work to do. They have thousands and thousands of um, people to deliver to. Um, so we have to do a lot of calculations um, to make this really fast. We distribute the calculations across many different machines. And so this is what this algorithm is about. So we have a whole lot of jobs, which we need to do. We have a whole lot of servers, and we want to find out um, what's a good assignment of jobs to servers. So this is difficult because um, multiple jobs, we, have, we have sometimes have more jobs than we have servers, so we have to decide what jobs are going to queue. Um, and that's not straightforward because different jobs have different priorities. So um, for example, um, a job which is needed for the UI, so for the user, maybe the user wants to uh, see a report, for example, um, they want a, quite a quick response to that. And so we should have that higher priority. But at the same time, uh, we don't want um, the whole entire 26 machines to be taken over by people generating reports, because we also have um, optimization to do as well. And so, yeah, we have to trade off um, different jobs, and we have different, different priority functions for that. Um, some, some jobs can also be paused, and so um, if they can be paused, you might be more likely to start them, because you can stop them later. Um, some jobs prefer different servers. Um, maybe certain servers have um, pre-calculated data on them, which um, we can reuse. Um, we also have multiple users on the system at once, and so we want to get a nice balance between the different users. And also, jobs are started at different times, so in some ways we need to reserve capacity for things which haven't come in yet, um, and which might be high priority. And so, taking all these into consideration, we want to create a fair distribution of jobs across the surface. So you can imagine this gets quite complex. Um, I actually can't tell you how this is done. <laughs> um, but we have developed from this, I mean, using pretty traditional computer science methods, um, we've created a system which can actually find the optimal allocation of resources. Um, so not just a good or a very good, but the optimal um, allocation. And um, it's highly scalable, so we can do thousands of jobs in a fraction of a second to get um, the perfect result. So yeah, that's the kind of thing you can do. You can't tell us because you don't know or because it's an industry secret? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great secret. Is it? It's what's confidential and proprietary. That's right. Can you tell us what you're referencing there? Because I'm not sure what you're Does that also give you information on how we need to buy another server now? We need to go from 26 to 27 servers because... Oh yeah, yeah. We have um, all kinds of uh, logs and information about um, the utilisation of them. Okay. How often do you update your server equipment? Um, we, in the past year or so, I think we added the extra 20. Like when I started we had 8 or so. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so yeah. yeah, so it's... <laughs> and I mean, um, like... Do you have to do with stuff on captivity? Do you have a service here or overseas? Um, they are um, in Texas and LA. And um, so they're in separate states just in case one state disappears. Are they married or new there? Um, I'm uh, not sure what you mean by married or shit. They, they are, um, like one job only goes to one server, um, so they don't need to do the same thing in two places. If there was an earthquake that wiped out in LA, what would happen to your job? Um, it would be alright, because um, Texas would be able to carry on Yeah, exactly. Yep, that's the idea. But is it all controlled from New Zealand? Um, we develop it all in New Zealand, um, but uh, it's all run on servers in the US. Okay. Is been adequate? <laughs> 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 I can get pretty slow sometimes. <laughs> 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 um, we probably better finish up there because dinner.